Hey guys, welcome to the Daily Word Bible Study, a plain and simple book by book, chapter by chapter, and verse by verse study in the entire Bible, through the entire Bible. We are in Psalm chapter 15. Now remember, not, not chapter, Psalm 15, <laughs> okay? The Psalms are a collection of songs, so they're not chapters, uh, a habit calling every break chapters, but they're not. And again, just by way of trivia, chapters and verses were not in the original writings. So they are the inventions of translators. And sometimes they get it right, sometimes they get it wrong. Now, of course, with the Psalms, they can't help but to, you know, it, it, each each Psalm in and of itself is um, a, 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 a separate entity. entity. So there's 150 Psalms. So, all right, let's get to it. Psalm chapter 5. What do I want? Yeah, chapter 15. And it says, um, Who can dwell in your tents? Who can live on your holy mountain? The one who lives honestly, practice righteous, and acknowledge the truth in his heart. I want to say something about this statement here. Who, the one, okay, let's go back. Verse one, who can dwell in your tent? Who can live in your holy mount, mountain? And then he goes on to tell you, gives you a list of deeds. Okay. Um, so in the New Testament, understand you, you can never achieve this. David did not achieve this, right? the standard of holiness you cannot sinful man cannot achieve this this is achieved through jesus death burial and resurrection so when we be here to keep this in mind how david is he's present he has an old testament mind but remembering that he himself did not live up to right he failed and then, of course, when we look at it from God's <laughs> revelation, um, we fail. And let me do this. I'm going to veer just for a moment. Uh, that's what I wanted to do. I'm going to come back to this, but th I think this is kind of important. I want to go to Colossians chapter 1. I just want to show you something here. Uh, okay. Colossians and okay Colossians chapter 1 computers running slow again what okay my computer running slow Hmm. All right, I'll tell you what, I won't go through that because my computer's running slow. It may jump upon me when I do this, but if it jumps, I'll, I'll, I want to I show you a verse in comparison to this, but again, my computer's running extremely slow for some reason. All right, so again, verse 1 says, Lord, who can dwell in your tent? Who can live on your holy mountain? The one who lives honestly, practice righteousness, and acknowledge the truth in his heart. Who does not slander with his tongue. Who does not harm his friends or discredit his neighbor. Who despises the one who despises the one rejected by God, but honors those who fear the Lord. Who keeps his word, whatever the cost. Who does not lend money to at interest or takes bribe against the innocent, the one who does these things will never be moved. Now, as we said before, um, this is not even all of God's commands, okay? Um, hmm. Oh. All right, let's see here. Oh. Computer's acting funny. Oh, 
Okay, guys, my computer's acting funny. Okay, let me see if I could, uh, Uh, let's do this. I'm switching to another app. Since I'm doing that, let me see if I can get Colossians. This is what I wanted to show you. Uh, and no, no, no. It's acting up too. Hmm. Wow. Okay. So my computer's acting funny, guys. So I'm going to switch to plan B. I'm going to have to <laughs> go. I'm going to have to let me come out of this because. All right. I'm going to read because uh, my my computer is acting up here. So I'm going to read this from Colossians then. And this is chapter one. So again, guys, since my computer is acting funny. Um, now you remember he talked about a whole list of good deeds, right? So in Colossians chapter one, and then in verse 21, he says, once you were alienated and hostile in your minds because of your evil actions, but now he has reconciled you by his physical body through death to present you holy, faultless and blameless before him. Okay, so that's, I wanted to show you the change here. The New Testament, how we meet the New Testament measure of righteousness is in Jesus. All right. <clears throat> so back to, I'm going to go to Psalm chapter 3. Let me see if um, my computer has unfroze. Well, um, uh, it has, but I've already read it. So let me kind of go back to Psalms. Okay. And 16. All right. All right. So Psalm 16 says, protect me. God, for I take refuge in you. I said to Yahweh, you are my Lord. I have nothing good beside you. As for the holy people who are in, in the land, they are the noble ones. All my delight is in them. The sorrow of those who take another God for themselves are multiplied, which is at this time with Israel's major downfall. I will not pour out their drink offerings of blood. I will not speak their names with my lips. Lord, you are my portion and my cup of blessings. You hold my future. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. I will praise, I will praise the Lord who counsels me even, even at night, my conscience instructs me. I will keep the Lord in mind always. Now, by the way, how do I keep the Lord in mind? Remember Psalm 1, who meditates in his word day and night. Okay, who meditates in his word day and night. I will keep the, the Lord in mind always because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad. And my spirit rejoice. My body also rests securely, securely. For you will not abandon me to Shiloh. You will not allow my faithful one to see decay. Uh, you reveal your path of life to me. Your pre in your presence is abundant, is abundant joy. In your right hand are the eternal pleasures. Now, verse 10 is a major prophecy. It says, For you will not abandon me to Sheol, you will not allow your faithful one to see decay. This is a direct prophecy to Jesus' death, burial, three day death, burial, and resurrection. This is cited in the Gospels. All right. Um, 
All right, Psalm 17. Lord, hear a just cause. Pay attention to my cry. Listen to my prayer from, uh, from lips free of deceit. Let my vindication come from you, for you see what is right. Now, this is ever so true. You should always allow the Lord to be the one to vindicate you not man if you if, if, sad is the person <laughs> that always seeks vindication for men and we do this on all all levels of life from the way we look right from award ceremonies everything um anyway verse three you have tested my heart you have examined me at night you have tried me and found nothing evil I have determined that my mouth will not sin concerning what people do by the words of your lips. I have avoided the ways of violence. My steps are on your path. My feet have not slipped. I call on you, God, because you will answer me. Listen closely to me. Hear what I say. Uh, display the wonders of your faithful love. Savior of all who seek refuge from those who rebel against your right hand. Protect me as the pupil of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings from the wicked who treat me violently and deeply and deadly enemies who surround me. They have become hardened. Their mouths speak arrogantly. The advice, they advance at me. Now they surround me. They are determined to throw me to the ground they are like a lion eager to tear, like young lions lurking in ambush. Rise up, Lord, confronting, confront them, bring them down. With your sword, save me from the wicked. With your hand, Lord, save me from men, from men of the world. Hmm. Who is, whose portion, whose portion is this? I'm sorry. Whose portion is in this life? You fill their bellies with what you have in store. Their sons are satisfied, and they and they leave their surplus to their children. But I will see your face in righteousness. When I awake, I will be satisfied in your presence. All right, let's go to Psalm 18. I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my mountain where I seek refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call to the Lord who is worthy of praise. And I was saved from my enemies. The ropes of death were wrapped around me. The torrents of destruction terrified me. The ropes of Shiloh strangled me. And the snares of death confront me, confronted me. I called to the Lord in my distress, and I cried to my God for help. From his temple he heard my voice, and my cry to him reached his ears. Then the earth shook and quaked. The foundation of the mountains trembled. They shook because he burned with anger. Smoke rolled from his nostrils, and a consuming fire from his mouth coals were set ablaze by it. He parted the heavens and came down in a dark cloud beneath his feet. He rolled on a cherub and flew, soaring on the wings of the wind. He made darkness his hiding place, dark storm clouds his uh, canopy around him. From the radiance of his presence, his clouds swept onwards with hail and a blazing coal. The Lord thundered from heaven. The Most High projected his voice. He shot his arrows and scattered them. He hurled the lightning bolts and routed them. The depths of the sea became visible, and the foundation of the world were exposed. At your rebuke, Lord, at the blast of your breath of your nostrils, he reached down and took hold of me. He pulled me out of the waters. Now, one quick note. If you notice, David's description here, when he talks about this language, the blast of his nostrils. Now, does God have nostrils? Um, and, the, and the answer is no. 
but he's again using figure of speech to describe God in a way that we can understand but always remember in a sense the truth always is what is being is stable verse 16 he reached down from heaven took hold of me he pulled me out of deep waters he rescued me from a powerful enemy and from those who hated me for they were too strong for me they confronted they confronted me in the day of my distress but the Lord was my support he brought me out of the spacious place he rescued me because he delighted in me the Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness he repaid me according to the cleanness of my hands for I have kept the way of the Lord and have not turned from my God to wickedness indeed I have kept all of his ordinance in my in my mind and have this disregarded his I have not disregarded his statutes I was blameless towards him and have kept myself from sinning so the Lord so the Lord repaid me according to his righteousness according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight with the faithful with the faithful now this this verse here by the way is again another um, um, is another one that is cited Paul cite this okay he says but the faithful you approve yourself faithful with the blameless man you approve yourself blameless with the pure you approve yourself pure and with the crooked you approve your, prove yourself shrewd for you rescued the afflicted people but you humble those with haughty eyes Lord you you light my lamp uh, my God illuminates my darkness with you I can attack a barrier and with with my God I can leap over a wall let me see here verse 30 God his way is perfect the word of the Lord is pure he is a shield to all take refuge in him for who is God's besides Yahweh now this is a truth here because even though there are even though there are many many God uh, pagan gods they're not real God is the only God that has manifested himself in reality not just from a standpoint of worship for who is who is God besides Yahweh and who is a rock only our God God he clothes me with strength and makes my way perfect he makes my feet like the feet of a deer and sets me securely on the heights he trains my hands for war my arms can bend a bow of, br of bronze you have given me the shield of your salvation your right hand upholds me and you humiliate your humili uh, humil humility exalts me you widen the place beneath for my steps and my ankles do not give way I pursue my enemies and overtake them I do not turn back until they are wiped out I crush them and they cannot get up they fall beneath my feet you have clothed me with strength in battle you uh, subdued my adversary beneath me you have made my enemies retreat before me and I, I annihil um, annihilate those who hate me the cry for help they cry for help but there is no one to save them they cry for help they cry to the Lord but he does not answer them I pulverize them like dust before the wind I trample them like mud in the streets you have freed me from the feud among the people you have appointed me the heads of the nations and people I have not known serve me foreigners submit to me grudgingly now David by the way really fulfilled this we when you go back and you read David's reign you see how many people were made to serve him the, 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 the kingdoms that he conquered those people served him foreigners submit to me grudgingly and as soon as they hear they obey me foreigners lose heart and come trembling from their fortifications the Lord lives and may and my rock be praised the God of my salvation is exalted God he gives me vengeance and subdues people under me 
He frees me from my enemies. You exalt me above my adversaries. You rescue me from the violent man. Therefore, I will praise you, Yahweh, among the nations. I will sing about your name. He gives, he gives um, great victories to his king. He shows loyalty to his anointed, to David, and to his descendants forever. Now, a long psalm, and one thing about the Hebrew song is they're not like our song. So if you were singing this, the purpose would be to tell the story that you want to tell. These songs are not measured in meter to rhyme, by the way. So, all right, guys, don't forget to like and share this video. And um, um, don't forget to like and share this video. And um, um, let me subscribe. Uh, I mean, let me get this right again. I'm kind of scripted, but my phone just rang. Don't forget to like and share this video. And subscribe to BP the Bible Perspective. As always, if you have a thought or comment, add it to the comment section below. All comments are welcome. See you next time.